God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today, we are going to be making three different potato salads. It's that time of year where we want to be having picnics and grilling outside and just eating outside or having lighter meals inside. And potato salad is one of those things that is a complete make ahead dish and it really actually tastes better if you make it ahead and let it sit, let those flavors meld together. So we're going to make three different versions of that and I'm going to use two different kinds of potatoes. And let's stop just a second and talk a little bit about potatoes. In my opinion, the best potatoes for potato salad are the Yukon Golds and the small red potatoes. The reason being they are waxier and not as much starch. If you have ever cooked potatoes like a russet Idaho baking potato, for mashed potatoes or potato salad or really anything that you need cooked potatoes. And I can remember my mother saying this so often, I peeled 10 pounds of potatoes and look what's left. They dissolve and that's because of the starch. So they're really not the best choice for potato salads. So I'm going to use the Yukon Golds and the Reds. I find they're interchangeable with most recipes. The Yukon Golds have a little more delicate, buttery flavor than the red, but really they're both waxy and they both hold their shape really well. So you could use either one. Today we're gonna make a Mexican potato salad, we're gonna make an Italian potato salad, and we're gonna make a fresh herb potato salad. So let's get the potatoes cooking. This part is completely up to you. If you want to leave the skins on, scrub them. These potatoes have been scrubbed. I am cutting out any little eyes, if you will. And um, uh, I'm gonna leave the peels on because I really like the peels. Now for the Mexican potato salad, I'm gonna cube them. For the Italian potato salad, I'm gonna cube them. But for the mixed herb, I'm just gonna slice them. Let me get a bigger knife here. Let me move these out of the way. Always start your potatoes in cold water. I'm gonna cut this one in half because it's kind of big. And I'm gonna cut it in slices, oh, about a fourth of an inch thick. If you have a cutting board beside your stove, when you cut, you can go ahead and drop the potatoes in the water. Always start your potatoes in cold water. When you start putting the potatoes in is when you turn the water on. Reason being, if you start them in boiling water, the outside gets done way before the inside will, and it gets like this little fuzz, for lack of a better term, on the outside of the potato, and that's because what starch is in there is coming to the outside. So I always start my potatoes in cold water. If you have small potatoes, you do not need to cut them in half, but these guys, some of these guys are really big. And I just like to have a, a different shape on some of my potato salad. Most potato salads are in cubes. But this one is kind of based on a French potato salad, and so it's usually done in slices, and I, I like it that way. This one's a small one. You want about three pounds of potatoes for each recipe that I'm doing. So I'm gonna do one with the Yukon Golds and two with the red potatoes. And I have five pounds of each, so I'm not gonna use all of the Yukon Golds. You could, if you only had russets, you could use the russet, but just know that your shape is not gonna hold together and you, you might need to cook them whole in their skins and then either take the skin off or peel them after you cook them. And a lot of potato salad recipes actually call for that. Now this is a, all of these actually, are an oil-based potato salad. There's no mayonnaise in any of these. And I like the vinegary type salads 
myself. That's just the, my favorite, so that's what I'm cooking. But you, you know, you could, if you wanted to, use the ingredients and that I'm using, except for the dressing ingredients, and then mix, you know, some mayonnaise with some oil. You could totally adapt it to a mayonnaise-based dressing, whatever your favorite one is. But I kind of like those oilier dressings. And I find for summer, I think that's better, especially if you're gonna be out at a picnic or something. But you know, it doesn't matter. It's the old way of thinking that the mayonnaise-based salads are what goes bad. But the mayonnaise, commercially produced mayonnaise, is so stabilized now that that really doesn't hold true anymore. It's just any food needs to be kept, you know, if it's a cold salad, it needs to be kept cold. If it's a hot food, it needs to be kept hot when you're outside at a picnic. The mayonnaise doesn't spoil, it's just that the natural things in the food can create bacteria. And I think that's enough of the Yukon Golds. So let's just put those back there. Now I've got that in here. I'm gonna put the lid on it only till it comes up to a simmer. Unless you just really like a boil over all over your stove, take that lid off once it comes up to a simmer. Now for the other two recipes, I'm gonna use the red. And again, I am not going to uh, peel them because they've been scrubbed and I like the peel and I find that the peeling has a whole lot of nutrients in it. So I'm not gonna peel them. I am going to cut them in half and then on my board, cut them into big chunks or you know whatever size chunk you like. I, I like big chunks in my potato salad. I wanna see that I've got potatoes in there take my lid off and I'm actually going to use all of these potatoes and we're going to bring these up to a boil and you'll find some hints that we're going to talk about when we start dressing these salads is if you dress your potato salads when their potatoes are warm and then refrigerate them the potatoes absorb the flavors better. So always dress your potato salads, no matter what recipe you're doing, while the potatoes are warm. And I like working on a board, a big cutting board, right beside my stove. And then as I cut them, these are about one to one and a half inch chunks. If you've got small potatoes, then you could just cut them in half, or if they're really small, leave them whole. Sometimes I see in the grocery store you can get the little, little tiny little baby potatoes and I love those things roasted. These are kind of big, so I'm just gonna cut them into about one, one and a half inch chunks, whatever size you like. I like big chunks. So we're gonna take a quick break. I'm just gonna get these potatoes in the water and get them cooking and when I come back, we're gonna make the dressings for the salad. I'll be back in just a second. Welcome back. Now our red potatoes are still cooking because they were a little bit bigger of a chunk, but our Yukon Golds are done. And let me show you how you can tell if they're done. Taste them to see if they're tender or take a paring knife. And if the paring knife just inserts easily in the center, then you know they're cooked through. All I did was once the potatoes and the water came up to a, a simmer, I added a teaspoon of salt to the water. I don't add my salt till the water is boiling, and that just flavors the potatoes. So these are still warm, they're just drained. And we're gonna make a dressing to go over this, and this is gonna be a mixed herb dressing. That's just some white wine vinegar. You could use cider vinegar, you could use um, champagne vinegar or rice vinegar, but that's just white wine vinegar. It's not as strong is white vinegar. Um, it's just, it just has a wonderful flavor, but you could use really any kind of vinegar that you like. To that, we're gonna add some salt, about half a teaspoon of salt, and a little bit of fresh cracked pepper, some lemon juice, and the zest. You know how we do, we like to zest our lemons. 
because we want to get that flavor from the outside, the or, or the yellow part only. Don't go down to the white. When you see white like that, you're done. Keep going around. Make sure you scrub your lemons or buy organic lemons if you can, if you're gonna use this zest. But if you don't have, well either way you wanna wash them, but make sure you wash them real good if they're not organic. Because the zest, we're gonna eat that. Well, come back here you. Now I'm gonna add that to my bowl with my lemon juice or my vinegar, excuse me, and I'm going to juice my lemon. I can find my little reamer. Here we go. I like to add just that fresh lemon flavor. I'm using two acids in this, which is fine. I'm just gonna do the juice of one lemon over a little strainer. I love this little tool. Catches the seeds. The strainer does, but this little tool gets all the juice out of the lemon. And I don't think you can beat fresh lemon juice for adding just this pop of flavor to pretty much anything. I'm gonna need that again in a minute. I'm just gonna add the juice of one lemon to my bowl. I'm gonna add some fresh herbs that I picked from my garden this morning. Now, I have some beautiful sage leaves. I just wanted to show you the big sage leaves. It's a pretty strong herb, so I think I'm only gonna use maybe two of those, because that's a, those are big leaves. The way I like to do them, is stack them on top of each other. I've got some fresh basil that's starting to wilt. Of course, I have washed this. When you have, I grow herbs at home in just little flower pots on my back deck right off my kitchen. Love fresh herbs. And in this recipe, really, you need the freshness. But you can buy them in the summertime. Farmers markets, a lot of the grocery stores even will have nice, beautiful, fresh herbs. That's just some basil. I'm gonna roll those leaves up and I'm gonna cut it rather fine into strips. The technical term of this is chiffonade, but I'm just cutting it into strips. And I'm actually gonna cut those strips in half because I don't want the big long pieces in my salad. And then that just gives us some nice little chunks of fresh herbs. I'm using what I like, but in this recipe, you could use any kind of herb you like. If you've got chives, that would be delicious. Um, if you have tarragon, that would be very, very good. This is thyme. These are such small little stems. Really, we probably could use the stems, but a, an easy way to do thyme is to hold it at the tip and then take your fingers and slide down and you get those little tiny leaves off and they don't need any chopping because they are very, very small. If your herbs are, or your thyme plant is young and the stems are tender, like this one's a little more woody, you wouldn't want to use this stem, but if the stems are tender, you don't have to take the leaves off of thyme. I'm just trying to show you how you can. I love thyme, fresh thyme, love it. I grow a lot of herbs at home. I use them a lot in various things. My favorite's coming up. This is just a mixed herb, whatever you like. I'm using rosemary, thyme, sage, and basil. And I think that's probably enough of that, and that's enough of that. And I'll keep those. Good way to keep your herbs is wrap them in a damp paper towel, I had one, I must have thrown it away. A damp paper towel, just roll it up in a damp paper towel after you uh, pick them and then uh, keep it in your refrigerator or if it's a woody stem like this, just cut them and put them down in a little bit of water. This is fresh rosemary. It's a very strong herb so you don't need much. It's actually my favorite, I adore rosemary. My thyme, I don't even need to chop. Let's just put it right in there because those little leaves are so small. Rosemary, you do. Got a very woodsy taste, kind of reminiscent of a little bit of maybe pine. Would make you think a little bit, but it is so good. I love it. And it goes perfectly with potatoes to me. 
but you could use again chives you could use different flavors of basil at the herb shops uh, at the store where I buy my little plants in the summer they have got all kinds of different basil cinnamon basil pineapple basil Thai basil you name it it's just amazing at the different and rub the the leaf and smell it and you'll get the flavor of the herb and it's delicious now we're going to add some olive oil to our mixture about half a cup because we got a lot of potatoes you want a lot of dressing because potatoes are going to uh, absorb all of those flavors and that's it you just are going to put lemon juice olive oil some kind of vinegar and all the fresh herbs that you want and then dress your salad while it's warm got one of my herbs in there or one of my thyme stems and then just gently because you don't want to break up the potatoes too much gently toss all that together and there you go is a wonderful mixed herb dressing kind of based on a french potato salad so a mixed herb potato salad this is delicious cold it's actually delicious warm if you wanted to serve this right now as a side dish to your grilled fish or whatever you were cooking it would be delicious one thing i do encourage you to do is taste it now with a fork uh, for seasoning you don't know you may need some salt extra salt let's see mm. does need just a sprinkling of some more salt potatoes use a lot of salt maybe a little more pepper for me mm. that is so good absolutely delicious so there you go a fresh herb side potato salad we're going to drain these and when i come back we're going to make a mexican potato salad and a Ital an italian potato salad i'll be right back Support the puck. Do I have to tell you this? And we're getting killed on the board. Hello. This is your Hello. territory, Grimson. Do your job. Grimson. Grimson. Hello? Oh, hi, honey. What? Now? All right. The itsy bitsy spider. Climbed up the water spout. <laughs> Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. <laughs> and the itsy bitsy spider climbed up the spout again. I love you, Daddy. I love you too, sweetheart. Hey, it's my girl. Love. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. Hi. Hi.
and welcome back. Now our red potatoes are done and I just put half in each bowl here and we're gonna make two different dressings to go two different cultures all together. One's gonna be Mexican, one's gonna be Italian. Now to this bowl, this is gonna be the Italian, I'm gonna add some celery for crunch. You could add some shredded carrots if you want. You could add, you know, pretty much anything you wanted to. I'm gonna add some diced peppers. These are, this is just, uh, you know, those little bags of sweet peppers that have a mixture of colors. That's what this is. And I've got the red and some orange and some yellow, just different colors in there. To that, we're gonna make a dressing, an Italian dressing. We're gonna start out again with some acid, some white wine vinegar. I am gonna add some lemon because I like the flavor of lemon in my salads. And let's see, find my little strainer. I've got too much stuff around here. Juicer. Oh goodness, okay. I'm gonna put the juice of one lemon. I'm not gonna zest it this time because this has got a lot of other flavors going on. I wanted to add the zest to the other potato salad, but I don't need to on this one. The juice of a lemon. I have a trash can over there, by the way. I'm not just throwing it in the floor. I had somebody ask me that one time. Are you just throwing that in the floor? No. I have a trash can. Then I have one bag of the, one packet of the dried Italian salad dressing mix. Love that stuff. Just the dried Italian dressing mix. Then I'm gonna whisk all that together. Then I'm gonna stir in some whisk in, some olive oil. I need a bigger whisk. That's not gonna cut it on this one. Let's just use a bigger whisk. I'm gonna add a little salt, not too much because that packet of that dressing has salt in it and then some fresh ground pepper. And that's it. You can, again, can change up the dressing vinegar. I'm using white wine vinegar because that's what I had, but sometimes I'll use red wine vinegar. Sometimes I'll use rice vinegar, which is a great one to add to this salad dressing. Makes a great pasta salad, too. Mm. That is perhaps my favorite dressing, Italian. Now, take a spoon. Remember to dress those salads while they're warm so those potatoes oops, will absorb the flavors. You could sprinkle in some cheese if you wanted to. Grate some, once it cools down, I wouldn't do it till it's cool. Sprinkle in some Parmesan cheese. That would be delicious in that salad. So there's a good Italian potato salad. Now let's go to Mexico. I have the potatoes and I have just some more of those cut up little peppers. I have one can of drained corn, canned corn. You could use uh, frozen corn if you wanted or even fresh corn. You, if you've got some fresh grilled corn, cut that off the cob and add that to it would be fabulous. Now we're gonna make the dressing for that one. Now this is gonna be a Mexican based dressing. If you have some, um, lost my train, a jalapeno pepper, you could absolutely add a jalapeno pepper to that and it would be good, be a little hot. So watch out for the heat level. We're gonna use limes this time. And always, no matter what you're zesting or juicing, run your hand pretty firm over a harder surface and roll your lemon or your lime. That really helps to release those juices and limes can be particularly hard to juice if you don't do that. They don't give out much of their juice. Cut them in half. Now I'm gonna use my little juicer. This is a great little tool to have. It's really for lemons, but I use it for limes because the, this particular one is, I like bigger lemons and it doesn't fit in there, but it's great for limes, except for when it breaks. Whoops, squeeze too hard. Oh well, we'll use our juicer, our little handy dandy. It happens. Squeezed too hard. These are hard limit limes. Handle just broke right off of that. Oh well. 
We'll use our zister. This is the tool I have. <laughs> Make sure you got one of these in your kitchen. And I've tried the, the wooden ones, I've tried the steel ones, the plastic ones. Get yourself a wooden reamer. That's what this is called. It does a much better job than any of them. Or if you've got one of those, my mom gave me one of those uh, glass ones that you, you know, push down on. Those are handy too. You just will need to strain any seeds out. Limes, for whatever reason, don't have seeds in them. I don't understand that. I don't know how they grow them, again, if they don't have seeds. But I've never seen a seed in a lime. Gonna add just a touch of hot sauce, however much you like, because this is gonna be a Mexican themed one. Now I'm not gonna use olive oil because I got a lot of bold flavors. I'm just gonna use some vegetable oil or canola oil. And I think I'm gonna chop up some sage and add because I've got some. If you don't have any, don't worry about it. But I, I kinda like that earthy flavor. If you don't have any sage, don't, don't sweat it. Don't worry about it. I wouldn't use dried, just if you have fresh. But I do have it, so I am gonna do the same thing and roll it up and cut it into little shreds, into a chiffonade. If you have some parsley, that would be good in here. Cilantro, if you like it. If you watch my show often, you know I don't, so I would never have cilantro. But if you like cilantro, absolutely put it in there. And those limes did not give me quite enough juice. So I'm going to add some rice vinegar because I have it on hand and I really do like it. It's not a strong flavored vinegar, but it gives you some acidity because your dressings need acids to, that's what a dressing is, a vinaigrette is an acid and an oil, usually citrus or vinegar. Add some salt and some pepper. And that's it. Again, if you had a fresh jalapeno, you could add that to it. Some black beans, some, a can of drained black beans would be delicious in this. If you wanted to add some protein to it. And then it could become a main dish salad. But just stir that up. You will find